What's up guys, Cliff here from the Sunday Drive. We are once again working on the 2014 Silverado. We have some air intake upgrades that are gonna be going on. So welcome back to the channel guys. We are again working on my 2014 Silverado. And if you've been watching along, you know that we've had these parts ready to go on the truck for a while. But in today's video, we're gonna be showing how to install the 6.2 intake manifold and throttle body. Um, in a previous video, we showed how to install this air raid intake system. So let's show it how to install this. And then we're actually gonna have some dyno numbers for both of these mods in some following videos for you guys. So first let's talk about why we're doing the upgrade. So as you can see, the opening on the 6.2 intake manifold versus the 5.3 is much larger. And that's the main reason. You're gonna be able to get more air into your motor. Um, you can also see, I, I believe the intake runners are a little bit longer and that's what um, is adding that increased height. It's about a half inch or so taller than the 531. The other reason we're doing it is for science. So we wanted to see um, horsepower and torque claims are actually valid. GPI has done some pretty good testing on these and they actually sell a version of this that's ported out on the inside. So you can check that out on their website. We'll have that link down below. Now, one thing I did notice that is different between these two intake uh, manifolds is you have your PCV system. One of the pickups here is on the side, whereas on the 6.2, it looks like they moved it up top right here. So um, slightly different layout on the inside it appears, um, but that's the only major difference that I'm noticing. The has the same sensor. Um, I do need to move over the sensor that's down here from mine. Otherwise they look pretty similar. The main difference as I said is that opening diameter. Now this upgrade would not be complete without an upgraded throttle body as well. And the difference in diameter with these is immediately apparent. Um, this is the 621 and the 63 actually fits inside of it. So, um, or the 53 rather fits inside of it. So big upgrade right there. Um, you can see even the difference on the, the backside as well. Um, style wise, they're pretty much the same, but you are gonna have that increased airflow into your intake. So definitely, if you're gonna do this, do it with the manifold. So as we mentioned, we're gonna be dynoing these parts to see how much power they actually add to the truck. We're gonna go back over to our buddies at EFX Tuning. They did the initial baseline dyno. However, before we do that, we're gonna be upgrading the drive shaft. So um, if you've been looking into Silverados at all, you know that the drive shafts on these trucks um, are prone to failure, especially if you go over 100 miles an hour. My truck is factory limited around 100 um, so that I can't split the drive shaft in half because it can't handle that higher speed. So we have an upgraded drive shaft from Driveline Performance that we're gonna be showing you guys how to install in a following video. Once this is on, we're gonna get a new baseline with our upgraded heads, cam, all the works on this truck in a fourth gear pool so we can go over 100 miles an hour. And then we're gonna add each of these components on, the air intake, throttle body, and the air raid intake to see how much power they actually add to the truck. So stay tuned for those videos. They will be coming up to you next. So let's start taking everything apart. Now, we already put the hood up in the service position. This is mostly to help us with filming, but it does make the installation a little bit easier if you wanna really get up inside your engine bay. It's very easy to do. There's two 10 millimeter bolts you have to remove. And then there are these little plastic or rubber grommets that sit behind uh, your hood pins. There's two clips that hold inside. So if you push in towards the middle, these will unclip and you can actually work this up and over your uh, antenna there with the hood mostly closed and it has the same thing over on the driver's side. So quick and easy if you wanna throw up in the service position, but obviously not necessary for what we're gonna be doing. And then we're gonna loosen this hose clamp right here. And then we're also gonna loosen the hose clamp that holds the intake to the throttle body. And you have the two connections on either side. So we're going to lift up on the gray part, basically squeeze, and this will pop off. On the, this side, you're going to squeeze it and push down so it's mirrored of the driver's side, and that'll pull off. And now we'll be able to lift the, this portion of the air box off. Just move it off over there. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove both of these. So same style connection on the opposite end, pinch in. And we're going to lift off. Same thing over here, pinch and lift. And now we're going to disconnect the wire going to the throttle body. Same style connection as the mass airflow sensor. We have this connection right here. This one you don't have a tab to push up, but you can still just press down on this side. 
and wiggle that off. All right. And then this connection is very similar to those two that we disconnected from the air box where it has this gray clip. You press in, basically squeeze, and that'll pop off. The last electrical connection is right here. It also has a clip you have to push up and release uh, towards the driver's side. And once that's released, you can squeeze it and pull the connection off. So there's a gray clip right here. You have to pull this back, again, towards the driver's side, and then you'll be able to squeeze on this black part right here and then pull the connection off. Now, if this is your first time removing your air intake, you're gonna have this piece of joy to remove uh, first. So normally this is sitting um, on top of your air intake. I can't even really get it back in there um, because of the firewall. This all has to kind of come out as one piece. The annoying part is on the back are all these holes right here. So your factory wiring harness is connected into that. And that harness is gonna prevent you from pulling the air intake out. So um, we have a video actually showing uh, how to remove this. So we'll link to that above um, where we replaced the fuel pump on my truck. Um, but it is a pain, take your time with it. You basically need to release those four back there. I just simply left it off. Um, it does have some sound deadening in here. Um, so if you want that, you can put it back on with it. Um, but because of how much work I've been doing on the truck, it's just been a lot easier for me to, to leave this off entirely. But um, that is up to you. Mine is off. Um, you're gonna have to take some time with it. You'll also have the wiring harnesses connected in here. Um, these were cut. This actually wasn't mine. This came with the new 6.2 intake manifold I'm putting on, but whoever did this cut all these rather than removing these, but you can pop them out um, and then put them back in if you want to. You can see on this uh, wiring harness, they're still all intact and normally that would install into this cover. Now, if you like the look of this and don't want to deal with the headaches, um, number one, don't reconnect those harnesses, but you also could kind of trim the back part of it off so that you could slide it in and out on the top and still have it installed. It's held in by four uh, bolts, one here, here, and then up in the front two corners uh, that hold that in place. I believe they're 10 millimeters. Um, and those would mount into these holes right here on your intake manifold. So there are some options if you wanna put it back on. For me, I'm just leaving it off for now. Maybe at some point I'll add it back. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the intake manifold in place. You can see I'm pulling straight up, it's not coming out. Go to angle, it comes right out. If you guys don't have one of these, definitely recommend it. Um, as always, the parts and tools we use in the videos are linked in the description. It helps us out when we go when you go through those links to buy them. Um, we're using a 10 here, as we said, but then we have it on a wobble extension, and this really helps get in some of those back places um, where it's a little bit constrained. And then you can also push it on a little further and it'll hold it straight as well. So I like these extensions, um, but definitely recommend this tool. Um, it makes doing a job like this way faster. So if you're doing this all the time, definitely get it. All right, last connection we're gonna need to undo is this line right here. Now, you are most likely gonna have a different connection here. It's gonna be that same clip style connection um, that we removed uh, several times here. Um, however, I have a catch can installed right over here, but I highly recommend doing this um, if you have a direct injection motor, if you're watching this video, you do. So highly recommend the catch can. I'll link the video showing how to install that above, but we need to remove this line right here. So I'll just squeeze that connection, pull that back and pull this hose off. Now we're ready to lift this off. Um, be very careful. There's no loose bolts or sockets. Your valves are gonna be exposed at this point. So definitely make sure there's nothing that's gonna fall into your motor. We're gonna go ahead Pick this up and pull it out. Alrighty. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like. There's this, I think just a sound deadening material. It might be a heat barrier, I'm not sure but we'll lift this off real quick so you can see everything underneath of it. Um, but here's your high pressure fuel injection system. So if you ever have to replace the high pressure fuel pump, it's right there. We have a video showing how to do that. They are prone to failure on this truck, but you got your two fuel rails and your distribution system or your fuel and then all your injectors right here. Um, so also if you need to have a replace an injector, this is how you get to them. So that harness 
that mess back there, those three plugs or three um, plastic connectors, that is what is normally in the back of the intake manifold cover that I was referring to earlier. Good idea to um, cover all these holes up, either stick something inside of them or cover them with masking tape. Just do something that they're not exposed and nothing falls down in there while you're working on it. And if you are wiping them down like I am, make sure that when you're wiping the top, you push it to the side so that none of that dirt and debris falls down inside. You can also take a vacuum cleaner. Just always wipe away from the opening. So if you look right here on my heads, um, you can see all the oil. Um, that's there, you can see more over there. Um, and this motor only has about 8,000 miles on it, or at least 8,000 miles since we built it. These are brand new heads that were put on about 8,000 miles ago, and you can see all this oil, and that's what's getting there even with the catch can. So the catch can is preventing a lot more uh, from getting here, and we have a video showing how much oil the catch can is actually collecting. Um, and it's quite a bit, so definitely worth the investment. Now, if you have a higher mileage motor, this is a great time to walnut blast. And uh, basically what that is, when you have a direct injection motor, the fuel isn't going onto the valves themselves to help clean them off. Um, if you add a meth kit or something like that, that can help with the uh, oil deposits on the valves. But if you have a truck with 100,000 miles, um, or even less sometimes, you'll end up with a lot of buildup on the valve. So almond blasting is something that will break off those oil deposits and residues without damaging any of the uh, any of the valves or the head itself. So we haven't done it yet on this truck. We have done it on some customer vehicles. So maybe at some point we'll make a how-to video on that. Um, but there are some good ones on the internet if you want to check those out. But this is what it looks like underneath your air intake manifold. And now we're ready to uh, put the new one on. Now, when you go ahead and replace the throttle body, it is a good idea to get new gaskets. Um, you're also going to want to pick up new gaskets to install down here. Um, so if you look at the old one, gaskets look like this. Um, you can do a visual inspection, but as cheap as these gaskets are, especially if you have a higher uh, mileage truck that you're replacing this on, just pick up new ones, throw them in there. Um, we'll have those linked down in the description as well. Um, we also need to move this over. We're gonna put that in, and that is just held in by a 10, millime 10 millimeter. Go ahead and put this on. It really will only go on one way, because it's gonna hit over there. So this should be facing off towards the passenger side, and there are four 10 millimeter bolts. Just gonna reuse these from my throttle body. And then torque this down to spec in a crisscross pattern. go ahead and install your new intake manifold. So here's the official GM tightening sequence. Uh, basically, as you can see, you're starting here with number one, two, three, four. You're kind of going from the middle outward all the way up through number 10. It's a two-step torque process. So you're gonna torque these all to one torque spec and then finish it up with the final torque spec. Now you're gonna go ahead and reconnect all of your electrical connections. Um, you're also going to be installing your other connection over to here. So my catch can is gonna now be going up here instead of over there. If you're running with your OEM uh, setup and you don't have a catch can, you are gonna need to have the piece that connects from here um, down to here. So probably, honestly, the easiest thing's gonna do to get a hose like this and run that connection down to here if you're not running a catch can, um, or great time to upgrade to a catch can. So. In this case, I'm just gonna plug in up here. Just keep that in mind. You are gonna have a different pickup point than you did before. All right, guys, so we're gonna stop the installation here. Obviously, we have a few things still disconnected because we're gonna be now installing the Air Raid intake. Um, we got the Air Raid intake that's designed for the 6.2 because we upgraded the 6.2 throttle body. I believe the only two differences um, are the actual connection to the throttle body right here. Um, could be wrong, I, 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 but I don't think the diameter of this pipe is any different between the 5.3 and the 6.2. So um, again, could be wrong. If I am, definitely uh, let us know down in the description. 
um, but we're gonna be installing that air raid intake. Now, once we have these parts all installed, we're actually gonna be removing them back from the truck. Like I said, we're gonna be adding that drive shaft to the truck, which will be shown in a following video. And then we're gonna just reinstall this, get it dynoed, see what kind of power it puts out, and then add the air raid intake to that. Um, and see if that helps us pick up any additional power. So I may have a little bit of fun of getting my stock air box back onto this, um, but it is rubber, so hopefully we can force it over, but that should be entertaining. Um, maybe we'll just be taking a lot of duct tape around here to hold it on, so we'll see how that goes for the video. Um, but definitely tune back in. We'll get some dyno numbers for you. Uh, thanks to the guys over at EFX. Definitely check those guys out. They're really good. They know what they're doing over there, um, and they've been a big help to us with working on this project. Um, and as always, thank you to GPI for a lot of the parts that we got for these uh, videos. Um, also good guys over there. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, definitely leave them down below and make sure to tune back in for those dyno numbers as well as the other installations that we're doing on the truck.